place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if you keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. So as this Palm Sunday is here, we praise his holy name in loud voices without shame. For we would hate the rocks to cry out in our place, right? Welcome to Mount Pisgah. We are so glad that we can be here today to worship the Lord and welcome his holy presence in such incredible ways. So we are glad you are here. If you're a first-time visitor, a special welcome to you. We would love to know that you're here both in the room and to those online. If you're online, let us know you're here. There's a, a, um, a link there that you can... Uh, gosh, I'm finding words. There's a link there that you can press on and would love to know you're here. If you're in the room at the welcome desk, we have a, a gift for you and we would love to see you there. We have a special guest with us today. Charles Mully from Kenya is here with us with Mully Family Foundation. We welcome you. Charles and I were talking earlier, and he is just an amazing man that has seen God's miracles all around him. And we were talking, Charles, that when Scripture says God moves mountains, your testimony proves that for us. Um, God could only do the things that has happened in this man's life. And uh, Charles, it's been five years since you've been here, and we have missed you. So we are so glad to have you here and worship with us. Uh, God bless you as you continue to do the work of God. Uh, we are entering into Holy Week. I saw something on Facebook this morning that said, a lot can happen in seven days. And we are entering this Holy Week where a lot happens in seven days. We would like to invite you to our Good Friday service at 7 o'clock on Friday night here in this room as we remember that which God uh, provided for us through Jesus Christ. And then next Sunday is Easter. We are Easter people, and it is the Sunday that we recognize that Christ is risen in such a beautiful way. Sunrise service will be at 7 o'clock outside of the amphitheater, just outside the underground. And then we will have our 9.30 and 11 o'clock service here in this room as well. So please bring your family and your friends, and we'll look forward to celebrating the resurrection what a great morning we have because Mike is going to come and uh, introduce a new member for us, and we will celebrate that as well. Thank you, Valerie. Good morning, church. It is a good Palm Sunday. Amen? And it's good to be in the house of the Lord and not outside with the pollen. Amen? Well, if you were here with us last week, we ex experienced an incredible season in the life of the church uh, with so many of our confirmands coming forward and receiving their baptismal vows and professing their faith and joining the church. And uh, that excitement continues to build and to cover throughout our church community. And so we're excited to welcome someone else to join our church and be a part officially of the Mount Pisgah family. So I want to invite Bill Cardi to come up. Uh, you've noticed, uh, recognized Bill. He's one of our woodwind players from the orchestra and plays the saxophone. Bill, good to see you, sir. You too, brother. And uh, Bill has shared with me his desire to come and officially join Mount Pisgah and make it his church home. He gives endless hours and time in the music, uh, in the music department. And so we're glad to have you here officially and begin this journey with us today. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I'm going to ask the congregation a question as well. Bill, do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And will you support the Lord's church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? All right, that's a thumbs up. And this is a covenantal relationship. We as the congregation have a responsibility as well. And that means to walk alongside Bill, to help guide him, to hold him accountable, to support him, to encourage him, and to be with him. So will you as a church continue to walk with him, to support him, and encourage him in his ministry amongst us? If so, say we will. We will. Wonderful. Join me in welcoming Bill to our congregation. God bless you, brother.
He's not a favorite or anything back there, don't be misled. But if you join the choir or the orchestra, you will get a special applause as well. So, uh, <laughs> as we uh, continue into our time of worship, we want to uh, enter into a time of prayer and uh, present our hearts and our minds uh, to be open and able and willing to be uh, together into this time of worship as uh, God's church. Um, as we do that, uh, we want to be praying for those who have struggled with the storms uh, that have struck a number of our neighbor, neighboring seat, uh, cities and communities and states. Uh, just the devastation is terrible, and we want to pray for those families, uh, those who are there offering aid and uh, emergency care. We want to be praying for those as well. Uh, we also want to be praying for the terrible, terrible um, shooting that we witnessed in Nashville uh, this week and the families who have lost uh, children, who have lost loved ones uh, in that particular moment. Um, it just continues to break my heart uh, that we are experiencing these type of things in our nation and in the world around us. And so let's also be thinking of those and uh, offering God's strength and prayer in this time. I invite you to bow your heads with me and join me in the morning prayer and our Lord's Prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the beauty of this day, even in the midst of pollen. God, we thank you for those who are committed and who are present here to worship you, to, to sing with their voices raised, Hosanna, blessed be the Lord. Lord God, we not only welcome you into the holy city, but we welcome you into our hearts and into this place as we worship and as we celebrate your presence this morning. But God, we come to you also with heavy hearts, knowing that there are those in our community and in the world around us who have experienced loss and brokenness. Others who are dealing with health issues and financial burdens, just incredible burdens that we can't even begin to fathom or imagine. Lord God, may they also feel your presence in this hour. May they feel your strength. Pour out your Holy Spirit on each and every one of these needs. Let them know that you are their God and that you walk with them in this season, that you walk with them on this journey as we all journey together toward Easter Sunday, praying the prayer that your son taught his disciples by saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's already been a great Palm Sunday. I want to go ahead and read from Mark 11, uh, verse, uh, verse 9, where it says, Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We would be remiss if we didn't give you that same opportunity this morning to stand and sing that verse together. It just says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand and sing it.
with this morning to greet the people around you and say welcome here to Mount Pisgah on this Palm Sunday. continue to worship here on this uh, Palm Sunday with uh, this this song it's actually right out of the hymnal it's uh, Hosanna loud Hosannas and we've added a little a little chorus to it that I think you'll enjoy as a matter of fact you probably already know it
standing as we have sung our praises. May we say our praise in word. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As the ushers come forward this morning, we celebrate this Palm Sunday, the remembrance of a historical city that welcomed Jesus with waving palms, expecting him to be an earthly king, a king that they thought would do some things that had no idea the things he would do. For Christ was a different kind of king. He was not a king of earthly measure, but a king that brought forth so much more from the heavenly kingdom and forever changes our hearts and lives today. For many of us, this season of Lent is a season of a, a journeying with Christ, taking a journey with him as we uh, celebrate what he has done with us. It reminds us of the relationship that we have with him because he is Lord over our life and Lord over everything that we have. So he calls us to sacrifice, sacrifice ourselves, sacrifice our service, sacrifice our resources so that we might be drawn closer to him as he provides for us and as he gives us the courage and the strength for those sacrifices. So once again, we are here to be invited to consider Christ's invitation to us to give a portion of that which he has given to us, to give it to him with joyful hearts so that we might further the kingdom and rejoice in who he is. Would you pray with me? Father, we come to you this day thanking you for your provision for all of us and thanking you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you as we give back to you from our hearts and our souls and even, Lord God, our resources. Thank you for the invitation. What a joy it is to participate in life with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. Let's uh, give another hand for our uh, choir and our musicians this morning. There are many, many churches in this community and in our North Georgia Conference that would be thrilled to have even a fraction of what we're able to celebrate in music uh, and in voice each and every Sunday. We are so thankful for that group. So today we're going to continue our series from Mark. And we are right where our children led us to at the beginning of this service. We are in Palm Sunday. We are standing outside of the city, preparing ourselves for a journey towards Easter Sunday. Something that I find unusual in today's text, or not unusual, but something that I kind of hung around in a little bit as I was preparing for today's message is the idea that, that as Jesus and the disciples were making this journey, they were coming into the midst of crowds, people who were there gathered around the streets for various reasons and purposes, there to, to celebrate the coronation of a king, of an earthly king that was going to come in and bring a new kingdom. And something quite different was gonna unfold during that week. So today's text, Mark, Chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, I'm just going to break up and do the first half of the chapter with you today, speaks directly to this experience of Christ and his triumphant entrance 
into the city. So if you have your Bible with you or uh, your Bible app or however, if you have it memorized, I know we have quite a few folks here that memorized Scripture. Um, I invite you to turn over to Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and hear these words. This section is entitled, Jesus Comes to Jerusalem as King. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A season a journey. We have, we have been on a journey together as a church family over these last 40 days. Perhaps some of you chose on Ash Wednesday to, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but you may have chosen to give up something for Lent so that you could practice other spiritual disciplines in place of that thing and, and draw closer in your relationship with God. This has been a journey for us to draw us closer into that relationship with God. And we find ourselves now here with Jesus and the disciples at the entrances to the city on Palm Sunday. People are gathered for the celebration of the Passover. Yet Christ has quite a different journey in mind, doesn't he? The tension that must have been present in that moment as you come into a place where people are celebrating and excited and Jesus knows what is before him at the end of this week and Good Friday, and where we'll gather back together again as a church family. We find ourselves somewhere in this journey today. We find ourselves somewhere in the crowds that were gathered on this day. I would, I would challenge you to, to insert yourself somewhere in the story, to cast your mind back to those 2,000 years ago, and where were you in the crowd? What would have been your response? What would have been your level of excitement? What would you have done as the week progressed and moved toward Good Friday? Good question for us this morning. I invite you to bow your head so we have a word of prayer. Lord God, may your holy word come upon us today. As we find ourselves standing at this moment, leaning in and looking with excitement at something that is before us, realizing that something quite different is about to unfold. Lord God, in the moments of this day, with the celebration and the, and the high energy of welcoming Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega, help us to pause and to place ourselves in the midst of the crowds and watch and listen for what is before us. Lord God, as we are in this moment, open our eyes so that we may see, our ears so that we may hear, and our hearts so that we may have understanding of what is truly happening before us, of this celebration that is unfolding. For it's in your son's holy and precious name we pray, amen. As I was reading through today's text, I began thinking about journeys that I've taken in my own spiritual walk. I thought about the fall of 1986 in my home church, Jones Memorial in Morrow Lake City, Georgia. We say Morrow Lake City because the cities are so close. 
No one was really ever sure which city they were in, but Jones Memorial United Methodist Church was a church where in the fall of 1986, I came down that center aisle as a high school junior by myself and professed my faith in Jesus Christ and began my journey with the United Methodist Church. I think about the journey that our family has been on this week. For those of you uh, that have loved pets, uh, we've, we've got a pet, her name is Maddie. She's been with us for uh, 12 years now. She was a rescue puppy. Uh, she is entering into her twilight season and she's slowing down quite a bit. And uh, we are, we're concerned and we're praying for her. But we find ourselves on the journey this past week of, of something that we weren't expecting this time last week, but knowing that our time with her is drawing to a near end, another journey. We look at the journey last week that our confirmands took. What an incredible experience. If you missed last week, I invite you to, to go back out on our website or on our Facebook page and watch the celebration. So many lives coming together. Folks praying for our young people, for those who are teaching, to see our young people, 6th through 12th graders, coming forward to profess their faith. Not an end to their journey, but a beginning. Some baptized, some joining the church. What an incredible journey we had the opportunity to witness last week. I thought about one of my mission trips, one in particular to Guatemala, which really resonated with me this week, moving into Palm Sunday, because on that particular trip, we, we decided that we would take burrows and ride them up the side of a volcano on a guided tour to the rim of the volcano. That was, and I've horseback ridden before, that was the worst ride I could have ever, I, did not, I don't have enough padding to have made that a comfortable ride, if you know what I mean. And the ride down was even worse because the burrows knew where they were going and they knew that there was water and food at the bottom of the volcano. So you're holding on for dear life as you're bouncing all over the place. So I know what it's like to ride on a donkey in a very uncertain time, in a very uncertain place. Where are you today? Where are you as you prepare yourself for this last week of Lent as we move towards Easter Sunday? I, I, I want to offer a word of caution. I want to encourage you not to rush. Don't rush towards Monday, Thursday, don't rush towards Good Friday, don't even rush towards Easter Sunday, but really take time this week and think about the journey that God has led you on these last 40 days and where he may be calling you to even this week. Today's text reveals to us a scene around a journey. We find the disciples on a journey towards Jerusalem and Jesus at the very same time on a journey toward the cross. The contrast of those two aspects of this journey that we read about today cannot be more profound and more purposeful for those of the faith. The disciples thinking about Christ and the celebration of going into the town and Christ thinking about the cross and what it would hold for him. It is difficult, if not impossible, to sacrifice as Christ sacrificed this week over 2,000 years ago. It can be easy to become another face in the crowd of those who are gathered around there. Can you imagine the sights and the sounds and what the experiences were like on that week, in that moment, as Christ comes in riding on a donkey, on a colt? I imagine on that faithful week and on that faithful day that Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem, there were quite a few faces that were in the town that day who were there for a variety of reasons, not of all of which were of like mind and like purpose. Some were just being there. Have you ever gone to church and you're just there, you're just present? Some were just there in the crowd on that day. Some were present whenever Christ was present. They were following him around. They were, they were the groupies of 2,000 years ago, the disciples and, and the crowds that followed him. They were there expecting something incredible. Some were there to conduct business. They, they weren't actively practicing Passover. They weren't worried about the celebration. Some were just there to do business, to take care of things, to, to pick up groceries, to, to go grab some milk and some bread. Others were there to visit family and friends. Many lives in and around the surrounding countryside were there just participating in daily life, really not paying attention to what was going on. 
Some were there on official business, interacting with the temple leaders, while others there were acting as representatives of the government. There were probably even visitors that were there that day, those who were passing through for the day, traveling to get to the next place. Have you ever found yourself in a crowd doing that? You, you just have to get to whatever this gathering is just so you can get to the next thing on the other side? We tend to do that sometimes, don't we? And again, the risk is to rush through the experience of what we're passing through that we miss some holy moments. Folks were there to remember the great exodus from Egypt and had either heard of or seen Jesus and they wanted to be there for his entrance into the city. Many were there for the great Passover and the celebrations that followed. And the religious leaders were there, each and every one of them watching, taking notes, wondering, plotting, concerned, maybe even angry. And still others were there with Christ, his disciples, those who were by his side on this journey. And some were there very upfront about who they were and they celebrated being there while others hung back. They covered themselves or they simply observed from afar. Where do you find yourself in the crowd this day? Are you on the front leaning in, waiting to catch a glimpse? Are you kind of mixed up in the crowd in the back and just kind of watching? Are you at a distance, really not paying attention much at all? In the crowd was every man, every woman, every child of all walks of life. This crowd may be strangely similar to the crowd we encounter when we come into this event of Palm Sunday. People waving palm branches in the air, placing them in the way as Jesus entered riding a donkey, not as a warring king, but as spoken in Zechariah, a prophecy foretold. But don't get lost in the crowd. Don't get lost in the crowd. Because in the crowd, there were the sick and there were the healed. There were the rich and there were the poor. There were the blind and there were the beggar. There were the lost and there were the found. Those who were wandering and those who were laser focused in that moment, in that time, in that season for that journey. There were those simply being present and others pressing in for a glimpse, a touch. Those that had hurt and others who were hurting. The broken and the whole. Those who looked like they had it all together on the outside and those who were feeling broken apart on the inside. Kind of sounds like church, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like a lot of us, sounds like me. And there were people there, people just like you and people like me. So where are you in that crowd today? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you willing to sacrifice in order to step closer, to lean in, to truly take this journey, this last week with Jesus Christ, our King, our Lord, and our Savior? Here we are today on this Palm Sunday, beginning Holy Week 2023. Thoughts about crowds and journeys may be the furthest thing from our minds. Crowds where you experience the fullness of humanity can be one of the most interesting places to be, which gets me to a present day observation of not only the church, but also of our desire to gather in this season, this Holy Week, and prepare for something profoundly important. This Holy Week, to prepare for something profoundly intimate with Jesus Christ. This is where the real journey begins. This is where the real journey begins, not only for the disciples and those 2,000 years ago, but this is where the real journey begins for us. A journey that started nearly 40 days ago with Ash Wednesday had a very real look that drew us to the heart of the matter. And if we're honest with ourselves, for many of us, this journey began long before Ash Wednesday. It began long before 40 days ago. It's For some and most of us, if not all of us, it's been a journey we've been on for years. And here we are today. Do we risk being seen? Do we risk being heard? Do we risk leaning in and touching the hem, the cloth of his very cloak? 
Today is a day like no other, where for many it seems like the end of a journey, it is only the beginning for us. And we are called to live into it, to celebrate it. As I reflect on today's journey from Mark and follow Christ as long as way, it seems that he, as surrounded by these crowds, it must have been so difficult for him to be in the moment of where he was and in the moment of where he was going. Perhaps we need to take pause and and take a lesson from Christ this Holy Week. Perhaps we need to do as Jesus did so many times in his ministry and remove ourselves from the crowd just so we can process and think about and pray about what's happening. Whether in the crowd or all alone, there is this interaction that takes place between Christ and those who are gathered along the road. There's a give and take, there's an ebb and flow, there's a dance, if you will, which makes me consider further about this day and the setting that we read about. Look around you, look around you. Who are the faces in the crowd? Why are they here? Do they really understand this Jesus we sing about, this Jesus that we praise? What do they hope to see? What do they hope to hear? What are they looking for? What are their expectations? What are their fears? The very ones who shouted Hosanna, blessed be the Lord on that day, would just a few short days later be some of the very ones screaming crucify him how quickly we turn on that which brings us hope and truth. Let me say that again. The very ones who were screaming words of of excitement and celebration heard words of crucify him at the end of this week. What experiences led people to this place, to this time, to this season? You know, sometimes it helps just to ask questions to kind of get a context and a feel of where things are. Every day, like a perfectly, every year, like a perfectly choreographed clockwork, we prepare for and prepare for Easter Sunday, for the Easter season, these 40 days of Lent, Ash Wednesday, Holy Week. And again, the tendency can be to rush through this week and we miss the moments. We miss those quiet moments when we can simply step outside the crowd and hear Christ still speaking to us today, setting aside once again our fear and our brokenness for the beauty and the wholeness of a relationship with Jesus Christ. This journey has a certain realness to it that is different from all the rest, doesn't it? Shouldn't it have a different feel for those of us who call ourselves Christians, the church, the body of Christ, Lord's people? In the words from the Gospel of Matthew, he says, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Boy, if that's not an acknowledgement of what's to come, I don't know what is. To prepare ourselves in the midst of the crowd for the journey ahead, realizing things may be quite different than what we expect. In the midst of the noise and the chatter of this world, we long for something different. We long for something that doesn't talk about politics. We long for something that doesn't talk about division. We long for something that doesn't talk about another shooting, another war, another rumor of war. We, we long for something that's the truth. That brings peace. That brings an excitement of something to come. Might this Holy Week be that season for you this year? Perhaps we can find it in the midst of everything. We can find what we need, what we want in this season of preparation. This view of looking at things, looking at self from both the inside and the out. We can approach this Holy Week by setting things aside by giving up, by leaning in, by pressing forward, by opening ourselves even deeper to hear the stories once again and to let them speak into our hearts. This journey, you see, we're all part of the Easter season this year. The importance of keeping the main thing, the main thing, staying focused on who Christ Jesus is. Regardless of where we find ourselves in the crowd, Regardless of where we are here, we are not alone in this journey. God goes with us. He's calling us yet again to follow him. He's inviting us yet again to go on this journey with him, this journey to Good Friday, this journey to Easter Sunday. And while it may seem like the end of a journey, it's really just the beginning. 
the things of this world will pass away. These last several years have reminded us of that. We were reminded that we are children of God, that he calls us, that he desires a relationship with us, and he desires us to invite others into a relationship with him, to keep him in control, and to be called to him as children. That is God on this holy week, still reminding us of who we are and who he calls us to be. Regardless of where we find ourselves this Easter week, Hebrews chapter 12 reminds us to stay the course, to complete the journey that we have begun. Remember these words, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Valerie and I were talking backstage before the service, and we were talking about Sunday mornings, and our preference is to be a marathon runner rather than a sprinter. So I wanna challenge you this week to be a marathon runner, to, to settle in for the long, steady pace, to experience the moment of this season, and to let God work in your heart and in your life. Let this Good Friday, let this Holy Week, let this Easter Sunday be different from all the rest. Let something truly take root in your life this year. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. As Christ made his way on this week's journey, he found himself in the upper room with the disciples and they broke bread together to celebrate a last supper. And so this morning we have a wonderful opportunity to share in Holy Communion as a reminder of Christ's sacrifice for us, his body broken and his blood shed so that we could be in right relationship with God and with one another. What better way to start the journey than with communion as Christ's church? So I invite you to join with me in this time of communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you. We have failed to be the obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now offer our individual confessions to God in silence. Lord God, hear our prayers. And let us hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God, amen. On the night in which he gave himself up, he broke the bread, he gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you, feast upon it. And as the meal was finished, he took the cup and he shared it with the disciples and he reminded them that this is a cup for each and every one of them to drink from, that this is a cup that is the blood of the new covenant, forgiveness for their sins given for each and every one of them and given for each and every one of us. This morning, you will be offered to come down and receive communion at one of our stations. The bread will be broken and a small piece of bread will be placed in your hand and you'll be invited to take it and dip it into the cup and receive this gift. Uh, these tables, our communion table is open. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table. So all are welcome, all are invited to come and receive this gift this morning. So I'm gonna invite those who are going to assist with communion this morning to come on down to uh, those stations. Uh, our ushers have baskets, and those baskets have individual servings uh, that are also gluten-free servings. And so if you would prefer an individual serving or gluten-free element, you can raise your hand, and uh, one of our ushers will bring one of those individual servings over to you. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts, that you make them be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Pour out your spirit on these gifts and pour out your spirit on us. Let us receive these gifts and move forward as your church and as your people on this, this Palm Sunday. For it's in your son's name we pray, amen. You were invited, come, receive the gift that's been prepared for you. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for this journey that you have us on. We thank you so much for the invitation that you have grown us at your pace and for your purpose. So, Father, uh, we just cannot praise you enough for all that you are to all and each and every one of us. In your name we pray. Amen. What a joy it is to be on this journey and as you pray for the church, we invite you to our website to see the latest update on our denominational news. And as you leave, there is a table in the gathering area for Stephen Ministry. Stephen Ministry is a one-on-one -on -one ministry for we all face challenges and transitional times in life. 
it's something that doesn't mean we're weak. It's something that means we're living a journey and we're living a life. And a Stephen minister can come along beside you to meet with you once a week to just give you a listening, confidential, loving ear to help you and God process whatever it is you're working through. Or you may want to be a Stephen minister and learn some amazing skills and help others as they transition this journey. So please feel free to stop by the Stephen ministry table. Now would you stand as we have our closing hymn for this amazing celebration of Palm Sunday. Amen. You got one more chance to sing, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. Let's sing that together. 